is here. It's restoring Roe and letting women decide what is best for them. Not the federal government, not state governments, women. We have to pass our Women's Health Protection Act to ensure that women have the right to make their own health care decisions. Doctors can get the training they need, and Americans can find the care they need without driving hours or being forced to go out of state. And I'm committed to doing whatever it takes to do just that. And next, I'd like to turn the podium over to Senator Kelly. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so women in Arizona deserve the right to make their own decisions about abortion. But right now they can't, and that's because Roe v. Wade was overturned. Doctors and women in Arizona are living with uncertainty and chaos as our state whiplashes between two abortion bans. A backwards 1864 law that bans nearly all abortions may still take effect for some time. And the back and forth between these two bans prevents doctors from just being able to focus on their jobs. I've heard stories from physicians who think and have to weigh and risk doing what's right for their patients and also doing what's right for their own family because of the risk to them personally. And that puts women's lives at risk. And I've spoken to several doctors who are thinking of leaving the state and many who have already left. I've been on Zoom calls and seen the cardboard boxes piled up in the back. And it's because that they, they can't practice under these current circumstances. We know physicians are choosing not to come to Arizona because of our restrictive laws. Residency applications, get this, residency applications in Arizona decreased by nearly 20% from 2023 to 2024. And for OBGYNs, applications dropped by more than 25%. The only way to fix this is by codifying abortion rights into law once and for all. The majority of folks in my state, in the state of Arizona, support abortion rights. And I don't think this 1864 ban defines who we are as Arizonans. We have to fix this. And I hope we will. And with that, let me turn it over to Dr. Belmonte, who is a OBGYN here in the DC area. Hello, and thank you for having me here today. My name is Dr. Michael Belmonte, and I'm a practicing OBGYN here in Washington, DC. And I'm here with, uh, as a fellow with Re uh, Physicians for Reproductive Health. In my practice, I am proud to provide full-spectrum reproductive health care, which includes abortion care, contraceptive care, as well as prenatal and maternal health care. The impact of the Supreme Court's decision in Dobbs and extreme state abortion bans and restrictions have had far-reaching consequences impacting communities across the country and the providers, like myself, that care for them. Following the Dobbs decision, providers have been forced to shift the care or services that they provide, relocate, or even cease offering care altogether in response to medically unnecessary and extreme state laws, the increasing threats to, of criminalization, and threats to our medical licensure and livelihood. Training opportunities in sexual and reproductive health care for those in restrictive states have severely diminished and become even more difficult to access. In fact, data showing Dobbs is impacting the decision of graduating physicians regarding their chosen practice specialty and location have severe consequences for communities. The survey that was already mentioned speaks to nearly 60% of those saying that they would be unlikely to apply to residency programs in states that restrict abortion and residency applications in states with the abortion restrictions have fallen, 
with the hardest fall felt in OBGYN residency programs. In states with complete abortion bans, the number of applicants to OBGYN residency programs fell by more than 10% when compared to the prior year. I'm fearful for what that means for the provider workforce when coupled with the reality that existing provider shortages have been exacerbated by abortion bans, as well as by multiple ongoing public health crises harming communities who already face the most barriers to care. There have been far-reaching consequences for maternal health and health care writ large. Data shows that maternal and infant death rates are higher and have increased twice as fast in states that ban or restrict abortion. And both abortion bans and a lack of high-quality maternal health care disproportionately harm black, indigenous, and other people of color. I would also be remiss if I did not name the harm that Dobbs' decision has had directly on myself and my colleagues. The inability to provide care that we know to be routine and necessary for patients and the climate of fear, confusion, and increased legal risk have both tangible and intangible impacts. These include the economic costs of being forced to relocate to a new state in order to continue practicing medicine, the mental health toll of taking on legal risk, and the threats to our safety from providing abortion care in increasingly hostile environments. While we are already beginning to see these widespread impacts on the healthcare provider workforce, we expect these consequences to intensify as providers continue to try and meet the demand for critical healthcare services amidst a constantly changing and adverse legal environment. Physicians for Reproductive Health is proud to support the Let Doctors Provide Reproductive Healthcare Act which would ensure providers in states where abortion remains legal are protected from any efforts to restrict their practice or create uncertainty about their legal liability. Thank you, and with that, I will pass the mic to Dr. Reagan. Good morning. I thank Senator Murray, Senator Baldwin, Senator Kelly, and my colleague, Dr. Diamante, um, for being able to speak with you here today. And I appreciate the opportunity to share my experience with you. I'm Dr. Reagan McDonald Mosley, the CEO of Power to Decide, and a practicing physician who provides comprehensive abortion care as part of my practice here in the state of Maryland. The impact of the Dobbs decision has been, in a word, devastating. As of today, 14 states have active abortion bans and seven additional states have restrictions on abortion care that would not have been allowed under the protections of Roe. New research has shown that more than half of black women, 57%, live in states with little or no access to abortion care. And these are the same people living in states with high maternal mortality rates and glaring disparities to access to health care. As a provider, I know how to deliver high quality, evidence-based care to my patients. I trained for years to do so. Over the last two years, I've seen more patients who've traveled hundreds and even thousands of miles to get care with me. And those are the ones who are able to reach me. There are so many more we know who cannot. So many of my colleagues now have had to navigate in an environment full of fear, confusion, and increased legal risk for providing evidence-based and necessary care for their patients. And some providers have had to relocate or cease offering care altogether in response to restrictive laws and bans in their state. And this is not just a problem in states with bans. Wait times for appointments in states that have protections for abortion access, like my home state of Maryland, have increased as we do our best to care for as many patients as possible. Meanwhile, our patients remain scared and confused. A 2023 Power to Decide survey found that 73% of respondents said that they did not know of a clinic or a health center where they could get the abortion care if they wanted or needed an abortion. That's why we've built and support abortionfinder.org where millions of people turn to find where they can go to get abortion care. We've seen more than 7 million visits to Abortion Finder since the Dobbs decision, so it's clear that people need and are actively seeking trustworthy resources on abortion care. But there are simply not enough providers and far too many bans for everyone to get abortion care that they're seeking. 
And the problem is only going to get worse as the data that's been presented today has shown from the American Medical Association shows that students graduating from U.S. medical schools were less likely to apply for residency positions in states with abortion bans and restrictions. These consequences will only exacerbate health inequities across the country. As healthcare providers, we trust our patients to know what they need. We also know that abortion is health care. And yet too many of us are being prevented from providing that care, and too many people are suffering as a result. We need policymakers to protect providers and our patients. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share my experience with you today. Good morning. My name is Karen Stone, and I'm the Vice President of Public Policy and Government Relations at Planned Parenthood Federation of America. On behalf of all of us at Planned Parenthood and our hundreds of health centers around the country, I'm grateful to the incredible reproductive rights champions here today for their relentless advocacy for sexual and reproductive health and rights. Thank you to Leader Schumer, Senators Murray, Baldwin, and Kelly for hosting this event today and for including us. Personal medical decisions should be made by an individual in consultation with their doctor, not lawmakers and judges. The right to bodily autonomy and self-determination, the freedom to make decisions about your own body, should not be dependent on the state in which you live, how much money you make, your race, your sexual orientation, your gender identity, or your immigration status. Restrictions have de uh, decimated abortion access for decades, and now 21 states have eliminated access to some or all abortions since the Dobbs decision nearly two years ago, putting an unimaginable strain on healthcare providers. It is no surprise that the results of the dangerous agenda of anti-abortion public officials is not only forcing healthcare providers to reconsider where they practice medicine, but if they want to practice at all. We hear from providers across the country every day about the challenges they're facing on the front lines of this public health crisis. Doctors are being forced to wait for lawyers to declare a patient sick enough for medical intervention. Some can face prison time just for doing their job to support people navigating impossible logistics to access basic, necessary health care. Abortion providers are heroes, and public officials have a responsibility to ensure they can do their jobs to the best of their ability, free from interference from politicians, judges, and those with a different viewpoint. Furthermore, people across the country who no longer have access to abortion care are being forced to travel hundreds of miles or more to access the essential care they need. And, and that's only if they're able to have the means to be able to do so. These barriers increase costs and wait times for time-sensitive care and increasingly uh, can push care completely out of reach for people with less resources. Because of this country's legacy of racism and discrimination, abortion bans disproportionately harm communities of color, LGBTQ individuals, and disabled people. Everyone should be able to get an abortion in their own community. No one should be forced to travel. No one should have to navigate barriers to basic and time-sensitive health care like abortion. Americans overwhelmingly support providing access to abortion care, and we must continue to find every avenue to do so. As we face two more decisions from the Supreme Court this term on abortion rights, we are incredibly grateful for our champions in the Senate who are continuing to fight every day to, to support abortion providers and patients around the country. This fight is long for, uh, from over, and we're grateful for um, everything that you do. And we're pleased today to be joined by our majority leader, Senator Schumer, who's been just a ferocious advocate for women, and we thank him for that. I'm more ferocious than I look. Um, anyway, I apologize for being late. I had to open up the floor um, and make sure that our border bill is in place for a vote on Thursday. Well, I want to thank Senator Murray for hosting today's presser and my colleagues Senator Baldwin and Kelly for continuing to stand up to Republican attacks on reproductive health care. They've been great, great advocates and also ferocious. Um, uh, I also want to thank Dr. McDonald Mosley, Dr. Belmont, Del, Dr. Belmonte, Karen Stone, and all of Planned Parenthood. You're on the front lines of this fight. So uh, thank you uh, for being with us. Now, why are we here? Because two, nearly two years ago, a woman's right to privacy and autonomy was upended by the Supreme Court when it overturned Roe. This tragic, alarming, outrageous decision didn't happen in a vacuum. 
As we all know, far-right Republicans have been working systematically to dismantle a woman's fu fundamental right to choose, and they've been working at it for decades. The most extreme elements of the Republican Party have made clear their mission to eliminate this freedom of choice. And we can't forget that John Donald Trump said just a few weeks ago that he was proud to be the person who paved the way to overturn Roe. Make no mistake, he'll be at it again if, God forbid, he becomes president. So, that was the word President Trump used, proud. He's not even hiding it. So with the Dobbs decision, they opened the floodgates for draconian and cruel bans on women's choice all across America. Republican abortion bans around the country have done irreparable harm. They have put hard-right Republican politicians in charge of women's personal health care decisions. Who the heck are they to tell a woman what she should do with her body? And they've thrown our nation's health care providers into chaos, forcing providers to leave their states, to shut down their practices, limiting providers' ability to provide evidence-based care and making them turn away patients in distress. Young doctors are now deciding where to train, and for the second year there's a stark decrease in providers choosing programs in states with abortion bans. We hear these stories all the time. I just heard last week about a young doctor who left his home state of Oklahoma to come to New York to begin his OBGYN presence at our state university system. Now in New York, we pass shield laws that provide legal protections for New York doctors to prescribe and send abortion bills to patients in states that have outlawed abortion. And this just isn't just OBGYNs. It's all kinds of providers, people who can't imagine starting or growing their families in states where necessary health care options are simply put criminalized. It's cruel. It's utter chaos for patients and doctors. It goes against the very idea of do no harm. So today we're here to say loud and clear, Democrats stand with women with our nation's, and with our nation's health care providers. We will never, ever stop fighting against these Republican attacks. We will never, ever stop fighting to take back these rights from the far-right extremists who want to pose their views on the country that overwhelmingly do not agree with them. Democrats cannot and will not simply accept a new status quo. When the MAGA Supreme Court single signaled the end of Roe and declared there was no constitutional right to an abortion, it meant our children will grow up in a world with fewer liberties than previous generations. The effect was instantaneous and devastating. One in three women in America lost access to abortion. And we know this has a disproportionate effect on certain Americans more than others. Rural and low-income Americans, people of color, members of the LGBTQ community, particularly the trans community, and black Americans. The far right has shown that they actually want to force the entire, force their will on the entirety of this country. We all know they won't stop until they've enacted a federal abortion ban. They will not stop America until they get a federal abortion ban. So join with us. The American people have told us time and time again they reject this MAGA agenda. They have voted against it at the ballot box in midterms, marched in support of it, in support for access by the thousands. They've rallied time and time again in support of access to abortion as more cases wind their way through the courts. And there are cases now in Texas, Idaho, New Mexico, to name a few. There are cases coming up before the Supreme Court looking at access to mefepristone and a hospital's obligation to provide life-saving emergency care. Every day, the legal landscape gets more complicated. It's leaving women and health care providers in the lurch. So Democrats will not stop fighting tooth and nail to stop that from happening. We will not relent. We will not give up. We know. We know deeply in our hearts history is on our side, and we're determined to preserve the precious rights that are the bedrock of America. Thank you. Thank you, Leader Schumer, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Yes. Um, Senators Cruz and Britt yesterday introduced legislation that would federally protect IVF. Do you plan on supporting that? And if not, why not make a small gain to protect Look, If Republicans really wanted to make sure that IVF was available, they would support our effort to make sure that IVF is in every state. I am 
confident that our legislation will do that. We are not going to accept any legislation that puts in law personhood. Yes. A question for both you and the advocates. We stand on lawmakers today are considering a bill that would put abortion pills as controlled substances. And I wanted to get your reaction to that as well as whether you're afraid Is this the House? I'm sorry. Uh, the Louisiana State lawmakers. Okay. Legislature. Um, I wanted to get your reaction to that, as well as if you fear that it'll be replicated in other states. Okay, tell me again what the bill does. Uh, it would classify methoprestone as a controlled substance. Look, you know, the, these are what we all predicted when Roe v. Wade was overturned two years ago. That the chaos that would come about across the nation in women's ability to access their own health care decisions would be chaotic and would hurt women. And today, as we're talking about, hurt access to all women because we are seeing OBGYNs uh, not go into the profession anymore or move from state to state. So women's a lack of access. I, I don't know the Louisiana law or what they're proposing, but obviously if people are going to, if legislatures and elected people are going to continue to try and control women's access to contraceptive, to their uh, reproductive rights, uh, we're going to continue to have that chaos, and it means that women will be hurt. And I'm happy. I don't know if any of the doctors are aware of the Louisiana law today. I'm at the first one. I'll let them answer. Yeah, I mean, I would completely agree. Ultimately, this is not based in science and evidence. This is just another way to prevent people from accessing reproductive health care. And it, it does worry me that this is going to continue throughout the country, which is why legislation like this is so important. I would add one thing. I think we all need to remember that Mifepristone has been approved and used for, I think, almost two decades. Um, it has been scientifically proved to be safe and effective, and women are using it. So current attempts to limit women's access to contraception, mifepristone, or anything else are nothing but politicians trying to control a woman's life. Yes. Have you had any conversations with Republicans about maybe IVF legislation or even some type of protection for abortion rights in any we, way? We have actually gone to the floor numerous times to try and pass legislation to protect, well, well I, my ultimate goal is to restore Ro Roe v. Wade, uh, but obviously to protect doctors, to make sure that we have access to IVF, to make sure that uh, doctors are not um, jailed for decisions they make that are medically appropriate, and every time we've been rejected by Republicans. Yes. Short of enacting the Women's Health Protection Act, is there any path for Congress in ensuring that OBGYNs and residency programs have access to the full slate of OBGYN training, including in states where there are severe restrictions or bans? Well, obviously we could put forward legislation to do that, but the ultimate way to do that is to restore Roe v. Wade. Thank you all very much, and thank you to our providers who've been here today. Appreciate it.